It's a typical morning in Southern California with low clouds and fog slowly lifting as the day gets later. But we want to go flying anyway and take in the views above the cloud layer on the coast. If you're a California pilot, this is a familiar scenario, and this whole topic might be one you're already an expert at. But the rest of us get very little practice departing IFR with a clearance to climb to VFR on top. VFR on top means exactly what it sounds like. We'll be cleared to punch through the clouds until we're in VFR conditions, and then we can either remain IFR or cancel and proceed VFR. If you haven't done an IFR climb to VFR on top, there's a lot of confusion surrounding this, so let's do an example flight at a Long Beach airport on a cloudy morning. Our plan today is to depart here, take some friends for their first glimpse of flight above the clouds, and then return to Long Beach for lunch. In order to get through this marine layer, we'll need to be IFR. The first thing to know about VFR on top clearances is that they don't require a flight plan to be on file. Even still, we'll need to call up clearance as we normally would to pick up an IFR flight plan. Let's key in the clearance frequency for Long Beach, 118.15. The request isn't too difficult. Let's have our craft scratch sheet ready to copy the clearance though, because this will be a bit unconventional. Long Beach clearance, here is 518 Foxtrot Tango, is an SR22 slant golf. Quest to IFR climb to VFR on top. 518 Foxtrot Tango, Long Beach clearance. Clear to patter intersection, Papa, Alpha, Delta, Delta, Romeo. On departure, fly runway heading to 800 feet, then fly heading 200. Radar vectors, Los Angeles 145 radial to patter. Climb to and report reaching VFR on top. If not on top, at 3000, maintain 3000 and advise. Departure frequency 128.1, squawk 7160. So that was quite the mouthful. Let's start with our clearance limit. We aren't cleared to a destination airport because we didn't file a destination. Our IFR flight is designed to get us just out and above the clouds so it terminates at an intersection, patter. Before we identify that point, let's look at our route. First, it's runway heading. At 800 feet, we're going to turn to 200 degrees. That'll be a left turn. We're going to fly that heading to intercept the 145 radial off the Los Angeles VOR. Once we pick that up, we'll follow it outbound towards Patter. We can look at an IFR chart, or actually just this approach plate for Long Beach, to see that Patter is the intersection of the 145 radial we'll be flying and the 210 radial from the Seal Beach VOR. So that's our route. Our altitude clearance is a bit odd too. We were told to climb to VFR on top conditions. Since this will likely be in class D or E airspace, we'll need to be at least a thousand feet above the clouds before having entered VFR conditions. So it's not enough to just level off when we break out above the clouds. We're also told to report when breaking out on top. If we don't break out, we have an altitude assignment of 3,000 feet, at which point we'll need to change our plans a bit. Let's have a destination in mind to advise ATC if this is the case, even if it is just a return to Long Beach. And we get our departure frequency and squawk as normal. So let's read that back. Cirrus 518 Foxtrot Tango is cleared to patter, runway heading to 800 feet, and then heading 200. Radar vectors to the Los Angeles 145 radial to patter. Report on top, uh, if not on top at 3000, maintain 3000. Departure 128.1, squawk 7160. All right, Foxtrot Tango, read back right. We can set this up however we want in our unit. We won't dwell on that here since this is more of an ATC procedure tutorial, but we're going to program pattern into our GPS and then bring up the Los Angeles VOR on nav 1 and twist the assigned 145 radial into the course. We'll navigate off the green needles of the VOR. Let's jump ahead as our ground and tower communications will be the same as any IFR departure and we'll get our takeoff clearance. Lifting off, we see that we enter into the low-lying marine layer pretty quickly on the departure. Our initial instruction is to maintain runway heading until 800 feet. So when we reach 800, we begin a turn to 200 degrees, which we have bugged on the HSI. As we roll out of the turn, we begin to break out on top of the cloud deck at around 1,400. Tower gives us our handoff. 518 Flashout Tango, contact departure. Over to departure, 518 Flashout Tango. SoCal departure, series 518 Foxtrot Tango, 1,900, climbing 3,000, and we are on top. That broke out 1,400. 518 Foxtrot Tango, SoCal departure, radar contact, maintain VFR 
on top. So now that we're VFR on top, we might want to cancel our IFR flight. Here's the thing to remember. The controller said to maintain VFR on top. We're cleared in VFR conditions. Are we IFR or VFR? We're still on our IFR flight plan. This means we need to stick to our assigned route. We'll fly 200 until intercepting the radial. Altitude is our discretion as long as we remain in VFR conditions, but we have to adhere to VFR cruising altitudes. This means we can level off at our original 3,000 feet, or we can fly an appropriate westbound altitude like 4,500. If we make an altitude change, we should let ATC know so they can provide separation services. And Cirrus 518 Foster Tango is climbing 3,000 for 4,500. All right, Foster Tango, thank you. This is the same way we would advise altitude changes in flight following. So now that we're at 4,500, we intercept the radial and turn to 145 degrees outbound along it. If he didn't already, the controller is going to start getting very curious what our plans are. Our IFR clearance only goes to the powder intersection, which is coming up soon. Once we got 1,000 feet above the clouds, there's no need to stay IFR, so we can cancel. Cirrus 518 Foster Tango, cancel IFR. Hey, Foster Tango, IFR cancellation receives squawk VFR for exchange approved. Squawk VFR for exchange approved. So here we are, up above the clouds, giving our passengers the view of a lifetime. The plan is to stay up here VFR, out of Bravo airspace, of course, until we're ready to head back to Long Beach. The marine layer always burns off at a certain point in the day, but it also has the habit of lingering for a few hours. It looks like we'll need another IFR clearance to get back down through the clouds. It'd be smart to have filed a flight plan into Long Beach before we departed, but we can do one from the air, either by contacting flight service, remember we're VFR and no longer need to be talking to an air traffic controller so it can switch over to flight service, or we can file via ForeFlight if we're within signal coverage. Another option would be to request a pop-up IFR from the controller, but this could be denied or delayed based on priorities. Let's use ForeFlight. It's a pretty straightforward flight plan. Here's what the main part looks like. We'll use the Seal Beach VOR just to the east of Long Beach as the departure point. Since the weather is low, we'll file an alternate LAX. Once it's on file, we'll get back with SoCal and ask to pick up our IFR. This will be a cold call, so we'll need to make an initial position report with them. So Caliper, Sears 518 Fast Trot Tango, about 2-0 southwest of Seal Beach, 3,500. I'd like to pick up IFR back into Long Beach. 518 Fast Trot Tango, squawks 4756, ident. So that goes in the box, and we'll wait to be identified. Hey, Fox Trot Tango, your radar contact 12 miles south of Seal Beach, cleared to Long Beach Airport, you fly present heading. Radar vectors ILS runway 30 approach, maintain 3000, altimeter 3008. Clear to Long Beach, uh, present heading, radar vectors to uh, ILS 30, um, maintain 3000. We'll set up the procedure for the ILS and brief the approach as we wait for the next instruction for a vector from ATC. Ray Fox, Chautango, 1 2 miles from the airport. Turn left heading 330, maintain 2000 until established localized equipment. I'll let's run 30 approach. Left turn to 330, maintain 2000 until established localized are clear for the ILS 30 approach. Zero five nine five Chautango. Things should be pretty familiar from here. We intercept the localizer and we're going to choose to stay at 2000 and intercept the glide slope from there rather than descending to the glide slope intercept altitude of 1600 first. Just a, just a personal preference in this case. Will be handed off to Tower. Hey, Fox, I think contact Long Beach Tower 119.4. Tower 194. And we'll switch over to them to get our landing clearance. Long Beach Tower, Sirius 518 Fox, Trot Tango, ILS 30. 518 Fox, Trot Tango, Long Beach Tower, runway 30, clear to land, wind 32015. Runway 30 to land, 518 Fox, Trot Tango. And it's a good thing we had the IFR flight plan in our bag of tricks because we need every inch of that guidance to get down and break out of the clouds and land today. IFR flight is so often mission oriented. It's about getting aircraft from point A to point B, keeping them separated from other aircraft and terrain. But some flights are a bit more open-ended than just A to B. Today we wanted to experience flying over the top, but didn't want the rigidity of a specific route and destination. Our IFR climbed to VFR on top, and then in route activation of an IFR return, allowed us to do just that. Want to really ace your check ride and become a great instrument pilot? 
check out Flight Insight IFR Ground School today at flight-insight.com slash IFR, or check the link in the description to sign up. Over a thousand of your fellow IFR students already have this year.